Terra Amps. Anybody else pronounce it Terra Amps? I know I used to back in the day. They have several different lines of amplifiers. Today we're going to look at one from the MD line. MD line is designed to be applied to various types of car audio system, be internal or external. Don't know what that means, but these say they're full range from 250 watts to 12,000 watts RMS. Today we have this model. Let's open it up and take a look. The MD8000.1, this is the EX model. And we'll talk about what that means here shortly. But it just comes with the amp and a big banner sticker. That's it. Nothing else. So let's get it unboxed and look inside. Here is the amplifier. Typical Tar Amps amplifier. On this one end, RCA in and out. Gain 0.2 to 4 volts. That is different. We'll talk about that in a little bit. High pass 10 hertz to 90 hertz. Low pass 8 k to 90 hertz then it has a bass boost frequency of 35 to 55 hertz with a boost of 0 to plus 10 db the terminals for the speakers are covered up by this little piece of plastic so we're gonna get out the good old knife and cut it off so that we can see get a better look at the terminal here you can see it looks like about six gauge for the speaker outputs and on the opposite side, we have these large 2O inputs or 2 alt inputs for power and ground. And again, you have to be careful because you have to look at this from the bottom so you can see the two powers are in the center, the positives. The two negatives are on the outside. And again, it's kind of hard to see that from the top of the amp, but you can see it labeled well if you tilt the amp over. Now let's peel off that plastic, give us that beautiful bean footage. As far as dimensions go, the amplifier is 17.6 inches in length, 9 inches in width, the millimeter equivalents are there as well, and 2.8 inches on the height. As far as the ratings go, we have the 1 ohm model of the MD8000EX, 2 ohms is rated 4800 watts, 1 ohm 8000 watts, both are at 14.4 volts. Now you may be asking, what's the difference in the EX model? Well first up, this has a 4 volt capable RCA input has dual 2O inputs for the power and ground, and has an enhanced protection circuitry according to TAR amps. The amp dyno settings for this amp, we gain matched our head unit with 9 dB overlap. We set the high pass to the minimum, which is like 10 hertz, the low pass frequency to the highest setting. Base boost was also set to minimum. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, the more engineering amplifier dyno to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch, smash me a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the dyno test. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. Occasionally I get the question asked, how do we know the dyno is accurate? Well, I have my engineer, my teacher, and a couple good friends to explain it. I used a Hewlett Packard 5710A dual column gas chromatograph with flame analyzation detectors. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! <laughs> All right, hopefully that helps for any questions about the test. Four ohms first, the amp is not rated at four ohms according to the manual. So see what we get. Certified test 2568 at 13.79 volts. I didn't realize when I started the test here that the amp was rated at 14.4. I thought it was still 12.8. So some of these are gonna be a little lower than 14.4. Uncertified 2658, 13.4. 36 and we'll reset the dyno and I did all these tracks at 40 hertz because I don't know anybody who's going to use this at a higher frequency because it puts out so much power uh, 2680 watts 13.84 volts what about that efficiency at 4 ohms very very good 96 and a half percent Next up, we'll try the 2 ohm test, rated 4,800 watts at 14.4. Certified test is first. We get right at it, 4,778. It couldn't be much closer to 4,800 than 4,778. 
So right there, let's try the uncertified test. And I bet we're gonna get over 5,000. And yes, we get well over 5,000, 5310 at 14.5 volts. So most people that use these with subwoofers are gonna be more concerned with the uncertified test because that tells you the amplifier up to clipping. Dynamic, we got 5348 at 14 and a half volts. What about that efficiency? 84.1% at two ohms. So still a good efficiency number. One ohm, the amp is rated 8,000 watts at 14.4 volts. Certified test first, 1% THD. We're just slightly under 14.4. We got 79.29. So I think if we had that little extra bit, a couple um, tenths of a volt higher, we would have gotten that easily. Uncertified, you can see we got it very easily. 87.07 at 14.05 volts. Dynamically, let's we'll send the 40 hertz pulse tone into the amp. And again, well over 8,000, actually over 8,500. 8,653 watts at 14 volts. As far as the efficiency goes at one ohm, 69.2%, that's lower than I'd like to see for a one ohm test. As for the results, we got right at the rated at 1% THD on this amp. And at clipping, we well exceeded the rated power. So very good job overall. Next up, we're gonna try it with the kicker quad box. This amp is way too powerful for the kicker quad box. So uh, let's find out how it sounds. After the amp dyno test as well as the subwoofer test, we went ahead and pulled the bottom panel off and showed the thermal imaging here. You can see mainly the hot parts are the output inductors. Don't see a lot of extreme heat anywhere in the amplifier. It looks like it was spread out pretty well. Amplifier did not get overheated during the test. The fan didn't come on, make a lot of noise. So overall, didn't have any issues with heat. Now we'll flip the amplifier over and show you the true guts of the amp here. Take off the screws on the bottom. There are six screws. And we'll pry the bottom off and here you can see the amplifier. This is a Brazilian style full bridge. It's just typical for what you see with the tar amps, uh, Banda, some of the other brands. Uh, a lot of these look alike. 4700 microfarad, 25 volts on the input. For the rails, 2200 microfarad, 160 volts. We can't see the extra protection, but according to tar amps, it is there. Now the good stuff, good to great efficiency, except for one ohms, the dual 2O inputs, rated power plus, especially if you talk about uncertified, cool operation, we just showed you that, and a variable base frequency as well as boost. So whenever we have base boost, we like to be able to vary the frequency. That's very helpful. Things that could be better, of course, it has a single RCA input and output. The potentiometers are still those plasticky, very difficult to turn. Crossovers, not so great. I'm not sure what the slope is, but does not seem that they cut out a lot of the vocals. No bass remote still. Uh, I say the fan's loud. They are when they come on, but in this case, the, amp, the fan did not come on, so I didn't have that issue. Overall, I thought the amp did pretty well. Just as a disclosure, Tar Amps did send me this amplifier. However, there was no 
expectation of a positive review. Um, they're welcome to have the amplifier back. So this is not a paid or any kind of advertisement for them. They literally just give me the flexibility of testing their products. So I'm just testing them and show them to you guys. So let me know what other products you like to see me test. Leave a comment in the description below. Would you use an amp this big? Do you need an amp this big? Do you need 8,000 watt amp? If so, what kind of system are you setting up? I love to hear it. Let's talk about it in the comments. Till next time, you know where Big D is, testing more amps, and I'm out of here. I realize there are very few people who would even care what the 8 ohm results were for the amp, but I'm going to do it anyway. 1,342 watts at 14 volts. Again, all these tests are done at 40 hertz. As for the uncertified test up to clipping, Thirteen hundred, almost fourteen hundred. Thirteen ninety four at thirteen point seven one. What about dynamic burst? Eight ohms, forty hertz. Looks like we're going with again right at fourteen hundred. Thirteen ninety three. Here we go, slow motion. Trying to lose my phone. <laughs> what?